about record deals back in the days, people would, um, it's quite a scary thing. Uh, you know, ownership of an artist, ownership of your own work, ownership of your your creative work. It's uh, scary. Mm. But I feel like nowadays, some of the deals, they don't consist of that. And some of the deals that I work with, I'm still a very much independent artist. But what I do now is I license some of my music. I work on uh, on licensed deals. So for example, my previous single that just came out, that's a song that I produced. I, you know, wrote, I, I did everything for, but that was licensed to a label because in return, I got the song sold to the label so i got paid for the um, paid for the single secondly any of the marketing budget all of the digital marketing budgeting um the youtube the, the actual video me getting thrown out all of that stuff and that's stuff that i call i call it tangible and intangible tangible mm-hmm. stuff is stuff that you make physical money off and intangible is stuff like you make you reap the benefit of for example whether you'd want to call it clout or hype or um stuff to aid your career that's not that kind of money can't buy this is these yeah. are things that money can't buy you know um viewship uh audience to grow the audience and stuff like that they're things that you that you'd literally be paying a pr thousands of thousands of pounds to be doing but you know if the label were taking the song that was the kind of trade-off that we had it was like you guys deal with all of that stuff i'll give you the song um you guys cover the video you guys cover the marketing you guys do and that's kind of how it works with a lot of so so a lot of so a lot of these times people have splits as well so an example a, a wild example would probably be like a 50 50 split of the master um the label will take 50 to to uh, you know to for the money that they invested in it and you might take 50 because that's your own work so it, it really depends some people are comfortable giving away more splits some people are comfortable giving away less some people don't want to give away any at all some people want to mm. give away at all so it really depends on what works for you what kind of shoe fits in your musical uh journey for me like i said the whole independent factor fit really well because i can kind of you know i can produce i can engineer i can sing i can record mm. myself i have my own studio i i don't really see the you know the point of doing every single thing under a label unless i need to so at this moment in time, I don't need to. But when I do need to, I can, you know, pitch my projects, pitch a deck to a label and say, look, I've got a, you know, I've got an EP that I'd like to, you know, and then come to an agreement. So that's kind of how it works. Nice. nice. Love it. Love it. I think, um, Nish, I think what, what everything that you've said so far, I think it all demonstrates why we all thought it would be great to have you on the podcast, because this goes beyond music. There's so many lessons that you're sharing that whether it's music, whether it's real estate, whether it's any investment class, any business that you want to create yourself. I think there are a lot of lessons mm-hmm. that you're that you're sharing. So I hope the listeners are uh, making notes either in physical with their with their notepads like Olu does or even in notes on the on the iPhone. <laughs> 